Welcome back to another video here on Free Will Photos. Today, we are going to edit a photo of a snake and hopefully make it look cool. So first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and click on Brilliance AI. I'm going to get that activated. So that way it brings out the tones in the overall image. And you can see before and after. It's not very prominent. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and push this up, see if it does anything more exciting for the overall image turn this off turn it on and i think that that looks pretty good but i've got some really really deep shadows right here in the head of the snake um, and then we also have some pretty deep shadows over here now these shadows i'm not overly concerned with but what i do want to see is if they can be opened up so the way that i'm going to do this is add a local adjustment, right click, invert the mask. And then I am going to just crank the shadows all the way. You can see that it actually adds a little bit of noise uh, into those areas. So that's not going to look very good, but I will go ahead and pull it up just until I think that it's tolerable. Uh, and let's see. If I pull the noise reduction slider down, if that does anything, which it does a little bit, it doesn't do exactly what I want to do. And I'm not going to get any of that detail back. So sometimes you just got to know when you have lost all of the detail in an area and I've lost the detail. So I'm not going to go like crazy trying to make this area pop, but I will go ahead and invert this. And I'm going to go with a large brush and I am just going to make a quick swipe over that. And I may even add this exact same adjustment into this area over here. So now I'm starting to bring in a little bit more light. Uh, this is called dodging, but I don't like what I did on the top portion here. So I'm just going to remove that. And I think that that's actually pretty good. So turn this off, turn it back on, and you can see what it's doing to the overall image. Uh, but I feel like, I don't know, it just isn't popping the way that I would want it to. So this is where I tend to go into third party applications when I feel like I'm just not getting the look that I want. And I don't know if a color enhancer will actually get me what I want. Uh, the foliage is actually pretty nice. So let's see, maybe we can play with this. Push the saturation. And then maybe come back to develop. And I know I'm jumping around here a lot, but this is just the way I work sometimes. I want to get a more moody, contrasty look with vibrancy over the entire image. So that's why I'm jumping around like this. But here's before and here is after. I think that that's looking relatively nice, but let's see what we can do with a third party plugin and my favorite plugin to go to when I want to modify color is color effects from Nick collection. I'm using this as a plugin with on one. It's very similar to using plugins with Photoshop where it just pops the image right into Nick color effects. And the image on the right side is the one that's going to have all of the uh, conversions done to it. And then this is just my reference. I like to keep this up because I want to see where we're going with it. So I'm going to just throw on a color balance and that's definitely not doing us any good. So don't want the color balance. I feel like that's just going to kill it. Uh, so let's go with an HSL. Now, the new Nick collection has this really cool uh, hue and uh, or adjustment for the colors here. As you click on each of the channels, you can kind of spread how far it goes into that particular uh, range of the color. 
and I find that very helpful. But I'm going to go ahead and click with the color picker here, and I want to get this green, so we'll click that, and you can see what happens here. It selects this range of green for us, and I'm just going to go ahead and hit the saturation, and you can see how that's making the overall uh, green pop in the image. And then, of course, if I wanted to, I can crank the luminance, but I'm actually going to pull, uh, and that's actually impacting more of the yellows. So what I may need to do, maybe we'll just increase the radius. I think that'll do us some good. And I'll push the uniformity down. Not too far, because now I'm introducing a lot of that pinkish looking color, and I don't want that. So now that I have the uh, snake looking relatively how I would want it to, it's not very noticeable difference. So let's just go ahead and push that green a little bit harder. And we can always blend this a little bit better once we get it back inside of on one. So I think that that is going to do pretty much what I wanted it to do. So let's hit apply. Let it go back to on one. Okay, so now we're back in on one. If I turn this off and turn it back on, you can see that there's a very subtle change, but still a change nonetheless. And what we will do here is we'll just blend this in with the original. I think bringing that down to about 60, it just helps bring out the green. And in fact, let's see if the blend mode of color will help us out. Yeah. And then I could probably bring that back up to 100 because I don't need any of the contrast that was coming with that. All I really needed was the color from this particular layer. So now what I'll do is click the hamburger menu and I'm just going to hit merge visible. And that just merges those two layers into one. It is a little bit of a destructive way of editing, but it's okay because I didn't need either of those images anyhow. Um, and it still is maintaining this as a raw file, so that's kind of cool. Okay, so what else can we do? Well, I'm going to go ahead and throw a big softy on here. Come to vignette, and then just hit big softy. And I'm going to pull the size down. And then let's pull the feather back just to see where the focus area is. So now I'm going to use the refocusing of the mask to bring this right over the head of the snake and then we're going to push the feather right up like so and if i turn this off and turn it back on you can see i did it, it kind of defeated the purpose but it is what it is i'm going to go ahead and pull down the opacity now i'm seeing a lot of red in these areas here so what I'm going to do is grab a color enhancer, get the color, or not that color picker. I want this one down here, and we're going to go with saturation. And I'm just going to click right here. I'm going to click and drag. Forgot that I have to drag. And what that should be doing is removing some of that saturation. But looks like I need to increase my, my range here. And it may be some in the magentas. Yeah. Okay. And then to fade this back in with the original image, this is where the opacity slider really helps out. Makes it look way more natural. So if I come up here and I turn this off, turn it back on, you can see it's just reducing those reds just a little bit so that way it's not like, uh, like bleeding all over the image. And I may even be able to reduce just a little bit more because I just want those to be muted. Yeah, that's better. And you can see how that works. So here's, well, I guess you can't really see the before and after, but 
uh, definitely a really good before and after overall. I think that that is, you know what? Let's try one more thing. Let's try a dynamic contrast. I'm going to go with surreal. And then I'm just going to pull down the opacity. And then if I turn this off and turn it back on, it just adds a little bit of punch to the overall image. And I think that that is pretty good. So there we have our edited snake. To watch more quick edit tutorials, go ahead and click the playlist on the screen or watch the video that YouTube thinks is best for you. Till next time, I want you to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.